In this video, I'm going to discuss <clears throat> the retail inventory method of estimating ending inventory, and more specifically, the conventional retail inventory method. There's also a LIFO uh, retail method, and uh, we're not going to discuss that in this video. So uh, the conventional retail inventory method is also uh, referred to as the lower of the average of cost or market. So it's a way for us to estimate ending inventory <clears throat> without necessarily having to do a physical count. Now, if you watched a the video explaining the gross profit method, uh, it, it would help to illustrate how the gross profit method, even though it's not GAAP compliant, is very similar in nature to the conventional retail inventory method that I'm going to describe here. Okay, or if you if we can discuss it in more general terms, the retail inventory method that I'm going to discuss here. So recall that under the gross profit method, we may not have information on the ending inventory, and that we may have to estimate cost to get sold uh, indirectly from sales in order to calculate or get an estimate of ending inventory. For this purpose. I explained how you need to come up with a cost to retail ratio and that ratio is uh, defined as one minus the gross profit percentage on sales so in other words one minus the markup on sales and then what you end up having here is that whatever this difference comes out to be that's your cost to retail ratio that's how much out of sales you have in cost so in an earlier example, <clears throat> we went ahead and did a, an example where a company sold $120,000 and their cost to retail ratio was 75%, meaning that the cost of goods sold or the estimated cost of goods sold was 90. So that information is used to estimate here the cost of goods sold and then indirectly estimate what ending inventory is. So. The retail inventory method that I'm going to illustrate right here is very similar in nature, and it helps to compare these two. I've uh, used gray here so you can see how similar these things are. And we have a beginning inventory. We have net purchases, including freight in. Uh, we also have goods available for sale, and then we subtract sales to get ending inventory. So. The grays are supposed to have you uh, see how similar these things are. And let me explain why we do this, okay? So the cost to um, the conventional retail method here is a little bit more involved than the gross profit method. And But he, the thing is that this method right here is gap compliant. If you recall, we can use the gross profit method, which is a simple approach, but not for financial reporting purposes. So we can use it for many other reasons, but not financial reporting purposes. So when it comes to uh, coming up with a system of estimating ending inventory without having to do a physical count, this is one that's gap compliant. And notice how in when we did the gross profit method, all the information we used was at cost. We didn't really give it too much thought, but that, that was all information based on cost. We didn't use the retail value uh, in our computation except for the sales because sales are at retail so now under this method here the retail inventory method we're gonna have to gather information at both cost and retail for a few things so what we do is we begin uh, with our beginning inventory we add net purchases in uh, including freight in but since freight in is only accounted for at cost I separate it out but technically net purchases right here at cost includes the freight in okay and then let's not worry about these yet but that gets gets us to something called goods available for sale at retail now and then from there we subtract sales and then we end up with ending inventory at a retail amount okay so similar in approach now here's where the differences arise we come up with the cost to retail ratio using this information that I just highlighted right here. So if you notice, I call this the total for the ratio and that ratio is X divided by Y. So that's our cost to retail ratio that uh, we have to compute. So let me just 
detail that here. I'm going to call it the ratio. So the things that are above that line are what affect the ratio, right? And the only added thing that we are now included in, including is something called net markups. Okay, so if you have any markups during the period minus any markup cancellations during that period, you would include them right here, the net of that. And that affects the ratio that you come up with. And then from that, you subtract net markdowns, which means if you mark down your product and you've canceled that markdown, you net that, and then you include that in here. Okay, so all these things above the line here are what affect the ratio. And that's important because we have to think about how certain things should influence the ratio and certain things should not, right? So as I include net markdowns, that does not influence the ratio. And it may not be easy to see, but the idea behind this is that by using this approach, the conventional retail method, um, we are coming up with a ratio that is a little bit more conservative in the sense that we are, we are, if we subtract net markdowns from the denominator after the fact, then it doesn't influence the ratio itself. Um, it, it allows the ratio to be smaller. Think about this. I'm adding something, when I add net markups, I'm adding something to the denominator. And when you add something to the denominator, that quotient is going to be smaller, right? And if we're estimating ending inventory, that smaller result is going to give us a more conservative value for inventory. So by separating net markdowns over here, we're, we're, we're doing the opposite here. We're not allowing a reduction in the denominator to affect the ratio, even though that's something we need to account for right here. Okay, so once you've done this, you get the Y minus the R, and then you get Z, whatever that is, and that, that technically is your goods of O for sale. But keep in mind, uh, below the ratio, once you, once you go below the ratio, everything now is done at retail values. Okay, so from that goods of O for sale, we're gonna, so at retail, we're gonna subtract the sales value, whatever that may be, and then we come up with an ending inventory, but that ending inventory is at retail. So the last step we do is we take that value A and we multiply times the ratio we came up with, the X divided by Y. And that will give us an estimated ending inventory at cost. Okay, so let me give you a, a quick example here so you can more or less see how this works. Oh, oh, by the way, before I do the example, so if we were using the same information as in my previous video, so in this one where I showed you the gross profit method, assume that this is the approach we did. The estimated ending inventory was 41,000. If instead we use the conventional retail method, it is very likely that our ending inventory after we do this is less than 41,000. Okay, because of the fact that this approach is a little bit more conservative in nature, and that would be the result. Now we don't have the same information available for this problem, we just have a few little data items, but do keep that in mind, okay? This is supposed to be a more conservative approach than just using the gross profit method. And, and in part, that's why it's gap compliant versus the gross profit method. So assume we have information on a company uh, with beginning inventories as such. Inventory at cost is 30, but at retail values is 46,500. To that, we add purchases, net purchases, and freight in to bring in that, those purchases. The net markups are 8,500. And what that means is that gives us a cost to retail ratio of 61%. Now, what am I going to use that 61% for? Whenever I finish over here and I get an ending inventory retail values, I'm going to multiply that times 61%, and then I get that ending inventory at cost. So uh, here's our 140,000 minus net markdowns gives us 133,500, and that's our goods available for sale. And then from that, we subtract sales. And we get ending inventory at retail of 40,500. When we multiply times the cost to retail ratio, we get 24,705. So this here is our estimated ending inventory 
at cost. Okay. So what you know, one of the benefits of, of using the re, the retail inventory methods here, one of the retail inventory methods, the conventional one, is that we don't necessarily have to take a physical count of the inventory. Okay, so it, and it's still you would still be able to use this information for your financial reports, for your financial statements. Now, companies do a physical inventory once in a while because they do have to check what's in inventory physically, right? But sometimes quarterly, they're not doing that. So on a quarterly basis, you might be able to use a method like this that simplifies your estimation of ending inventory uh, and hence your estimation of cost of goods sold. All right, a couple other items. Oh, and before I continue here, so sometimes I've, I've, no, I've seen students have struggled with this retail inventory method. Um, and I always ask students to look back at a more an easier approach like the gross profit method and try to see the similarities and then from there build up to the additional items and i think that helps in order to make it less complex all right a couple other items that may you may need to consider okay so when we say net purchases and by the way i added those in green right here just so you can contrast um but the idea is you can either purchase the goods or you can transfer those goods in from another department. So if you're in a manufacturing environment, this, this analysis that you're doing might be for one of the production areas. And if that's the case, your purchases are technically the items you transfer in from a different department. Another item that may arise are losses, okay? And if those losses are considered abnormal, we do it above the line of the ratio. Whereas if they're considered normal, uh, we do it below the line. It does not affect the ratio. Okay. And then uh, some other items here like shortages, if they're considered normal, those are, you know, the losses. So if you have abnormal shortages or losses, that's, that would be accounted up here. Okay. Uh, and then employee discounts, if you offer employees discounts, that would be subtracted from here as well, from the bottom. Now, employee discounts are, you know, you're not going to have abnormal employee discounts, okay? So keep that in mind. But the idea here is this. If during a period you have an abnormal amount of losses, we don't want to just subtract it from the retail side because then that would affect the ratio, right? So we, you know, we, it would change the ratio. So what we want to do is make sure that we subtract it on both the cost and the retail amount so that it influences the ratio in the same fashion. In other words, maybe I should restate that. If you just subtract it up here from the retail, then you would have a smaller denominator, right? And then hence a smaller cost to retail ratio. So by including this, we minimize that effect and hence keep this uh, ratio as uh, uh, we keep this ratio as even as possible. And as I'm I'm saying this, I, I may have misstated this. Okay, let me redo this again. If I only subtract the abnormal shortages or abnormal losses from the retail side, then we would have a smaller denominator and hence a larger, larger, I, I think I said smaller, a larger cost to retail ratio. Mm -hmm. So that's not conservative. So the idea is if we have abnormal losses, we're gonna include both the cost and the retail amount so that it affects the retail ratio in the same fashion in both the numerator and the denominator, okay? Uh, so those are just a couple of little additional things that you gotta be aware of. And, uh, and, and when you think about this, I, I illustrated the conventional method, okay? These, uh, there's retail inventory methods is the generic or the overall name of these approaches. There's the conventional retail or the lower of average and cost of market. And then there's the LIFO one. So I'm choosing to present the conventional retail approach. Uh, and you can build from this to do the LIFO approach. The convention, not the conventional, but the life or retail. And there really is just a few little adjustments that you would do. So if it helps you, look at things uh, in, a, in, a, in a, 
like in a continuation here. So this is this you build, <clears throat> you learn so you can build to be able to understand this one. And then you learn this one so you can understand the LIFO retail inventory method. Okay, this concludes the video on uh, the retail inventory method of estimating ending inventory.